Good evening, welcome. My name is Tom Kruzek, and I'm the president of Notre Dame College, which is located in South Euclid. And I'm delighted to be here with you today. Just so I get a little sense of the room, how about everybody who's here with either an eight, who is an eighth grader or an eighth grader parent? Raise your hand. Okay, how about ninth graders? Okay, 10th, good, 11th, 12th graders? Good. Well, welcome. I'm delighted to be here with you today, and, and I'm really excited to be able to share with you a little bit about you have to find your passion to follow your passion. And I know that's one of those kind of charged words, passion, but we'll get to that in a minute. But um, first of all, I just want to congratulate you. This is kind of a neat time in your lives. Students who are there, who are going through this, parents who are going through this, it's a neat time. It's an exciting time. So you make that transition from high school to college. It's a little bit of a scary time as well, I know. Um, and I, while I'm here as a president of college, I have five you know, kids of my own. Um, my uh, youngest is 25 years old. So you know, I've gone through this process more than a few times, um, and, and I understand what you're going through, both, I, I, not from the sons and daughters perspective, but from the parents' perspective, I certainly know what you're going through. And as you go through this period of time, I think you know, as parents and the sons and daughters, one of the things that you're gonna do is you're gonna get a lot of advice. Okay, and it's the advice is going to come from moms and dads, uncles and aunts, you know, neighbors, brothers, sisters, everybody. This is Ember, our campus dog over here. Um, she does not give advice. We've asked her not to give advice. She gives unconditional love, so that's that's kind of good. But you're going to get advice from everybody, and the advice is very well-meaning, because for us as advisors, parents, you want the best for your sons and daughters. You want them absolutely to have a wonderful collegiate experience. You want them to have a wonderful life after they leave school, finding something that they like to do, something that they love to do, something with meaning in their lives. No question about it. I mean, that's what we all want. So for the students who are out there, yeah, you're gonna get a lot of advice, but the advice is really well-meaning because we all want you to be happy. We want you to succeed. Certainly at Notre Dame, we spend a lot of time talking about life after Notre Dame with our students, getting them ready for life after Notre Dame. But when you get advice, one of the pieces of advice that you're in, invariably going to get, sons or daughters who are out there, and maybe you've already gotten it, is you have to follow your passion. Do what you love, and a rewarding career will follow, right? Makes sense. Perfect sense. And I know there's that word again, passion. And it's that word that we hear so much about, and there's a lot that's been written about it, a lot has been said about it, but you've got to follow your passion. And that makes perfect sense. I mean, I love what I do as a college president. I cannot wait to get out of bed in the morning and get to work because I absolutely love what I do. I love everything about it. There are things that maybe I wish I had a little bit less of, but I love what I do. And that's what we, you know, for those of us in the room who are adults who have that experience, it's a wonderful experience and that's what we want for our sons and daughters. But ultimately, that might be good advice about following your passion, but, oops, but most of you, sons or daughters, the students in the room, have yet to discover what you're passionate about because for most of you, your passion has been about graduating from high school and getting into a college or university. And that makes perfect sense for what you're going through in your life. So it's not surprising that for many of your, your sons or daughters, maybe the, the students in this room, you don't have a passion yet. Because these are the kinds of things that we hear when we talk to students about passion. We hear them say, how can I be expected to know what you want me to major in? I'm just, pick a, pick a blank there. How can I be expected to know what the world is going to be like in the future? The Apple, the, the iPhone, the iPad, those were things that, did, that just came out not too long ago. How would I have known that I wanted to do a career in those areas? And now, you're probably saying to yourself, wait a minute, Kruzek, stop here. I know of many, many people who knew it when they were three years old that they wanted to be a doctor, or when they were four years old that they really wanted to be a teacher, or when they were five years old, they really wanted to be a venture capitalist working in Silicon Valley. I know, I hear that story all the time. <laughs> But honestly, and here's the gospel truth, very, very, very few students, and maybe I could even add another very in there as well, your sons or daughters' age, or those of you who are in the room who are students, know exactly what they wanted to do. The story about the guy who really, or the gal who really wanted to be a doctor when they were coming out of their mother's birth canal, rather unusual. That's not what you hear about very often. So if you haven't found your passion yet, I would urge you to relax, and parents, Relax with your sons and daughters at that point. To make this point a little more, let me tell you just a quick story. Let me tell you a story about me, okay? When I was at, getting into college, I was a first generation student, so what I really wanted to do when I got to college was I wanted to get to college. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to graduate from college. I had no idea really what I wanted to do. 
took a biology class in high school and said, yeah, I'll be a biology major when I get to college. Makes sense. I'll do that. I took biology, and I, partway through my freshman year, I realized I'm not going to be a biology major. I don't like this. This is not something I like to do. So I was taking a psychology class. So I said, hey, I'll be a psychology major. That's what I'll do. <laughs> By then, okay, I changed my major. This is my, I changed my major once and said, okay, I'm going to stick this one out. So I figured, okay, I'll probably go on and get a PhD in psychology. That's what I'll do. And it made sense. I, I kind of enjoyed what I was doing in psychology. The class that I took freshman year was good. So I got into it and said, okay, I'm going to do this. But while I was hanging around in my dorm room, this thing was there, the Wall Street Journal. Because I hung out you know, in the dorm with a lot of guys and gal, or a lot of guys, because uh, it was an all-male dorm, who were majoring in, in finance or marketing. And so the Wall Street Journal was around. So I started picking this thing up and I started reading it. And I didn't really understand what I was reading at first, but ultimately as I got to read it a little bit more, I said, you know, I kind of like this business thing. This might be kind of fun. So I took a business class here and there, and I said partway through my junior year, I said, I'm not going to get a PhD. I'm going to go on and get an MBA. I like this business thing. Did an internship, did some, job, did some work in the summers, and found out, yeah, I really like this. So I ended up getting an MBA, and eventually I ended up working here at Walt Disney World in Florida, which was a lot of fun. It was a great experience. Then eventually transitioned, became an entrepreneur, ran a few businesses with my wife, and then changed careers, and now I'm a college president. I've been in the world of higher education now for about 10 years. I love it. Absolutely love, love what I do. But if anybody had told me when I was a freshman or a sophomore in college that I'm one day going to be handing out diplomas to people, I'd say they were out of their mind. That just can't possibly be me. But that passion, that way of finding your passion, for me at least, took time. And it's going to take time for your sons and daughters. It's going to take time to find that passion. So if you're supposed to follow your passion, which makes, again, good sense, how do you follow your passion when you don't know what it is? So I've got some tips here. You know, one, and the first tip is to find your passion. Learn about yourself. Think about what you like to do. What are your hobbies? And I know I misspelled hobbies there. Um, what, obviously, English was not one of my best in my strengths there. But, but, I, but at least I recognize that now, which is, which is part of the battle there. What classes have you enjoyed? What's that? Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's academics. We're always doing that kind of stuff. You know, what do you like to do? What do your sons and daughters not like to do? What do you value? How do you like to spend your time in some ways? Do you like having things a certain way all the time? Or do you like to wake up in the morning not knowing what you're going to do? Those are all things that I think are really important to find your passion is about learning about yourself. You know, because if, you, if you're not sure of what your passion is, everybody has an idea for you, okay? But ultimately, this is the most important thing. It's your life. It's your son's and daughter's life. Let them kind of find their way. Help them. Help them along the way. But as a part of that thought, when you ask a student, so what's your major going to be? This is invariably what they end up coming out like. <laughs> I try never to do that because I know that. You know, and I have very polite students who come through. And so I never try to ask that question. What I always try to do, because that's going to be the look I'm going to get from them. Instead, what I like to do is, what do you like? What are your interests? What classes maybe that did you take in high school that kind of got your, your, yourself motivated that you liked? Think about it from that perspective. And parents, try and stay away from what's your major. But how do you learn about yourself then? I mean, what is the way? If we want to learn about ourselves, which makes perfect sense, how do we do that? I think you think about your strengths and you think about your weaknesses. I had a ski instructor who once, one time used to tell me about strengths and that other thing that I don't want to talk about. So we can call it a weakness. He didn't like to use the word weakness, but that is because we all know that there's things that we're good at and things that we're not so good at. And it's about finding those things. So at Notre Dame, one of the things that we use is we use the Focus 2 test. And this is something that you can take online. You don't have to be at Notre Dame to do that. But that's a test that we kind of like. There's other things like the Myers-Briggs and other kinds of assessments, which give you a little bit of a look into yourself. Again, nothing is perfect, but it gives you an idea. It starts pointing you in a direction because that's ultimately what you want to do while you're in high school and as you start making that transition to college. Think about those things that you like, things that might point you in that direction. Because by taking that assessment, you're going to learn about yourself and give you that time also then to just self-reflect and say, what are the things that I like to do? What do I like to do? What do I like to read about? What do I even like to watch on TV? If I'm on Netflix, where do I find myself? Do I find myself sometimes going over to TED Talks? Is that really where I like to spend some time? Those are the things that gives you clues to a direction for your career. 
So one of the things that a lot of colleges will do, and we do it at Notre Dame as well, is we'll offer high school students an opportunity to come to summer camps, like we do a summer springboard program, a summer college camp program. Those are great opportunities for you to get out there and just take a test, take a taste to see where my interests might be lying. Because it matches your personality and the way you like to work, because that's something that's important. You know, there are certain careers that there's no matter what I would want to do, I would not be able to do it because I wouldn't be able to work with my career in that way. Because again, not every person is right for every career. We know people like that, right? We know people who are in the wrong careers. One that, remind, that comes to mind is one of the doctors who delivered a couple of my kids. I ran into him a number of years later and I found out he dropped out, he wasn't practicing medicine anymore. And I said, why aren't you doing that anymore? He says, I hated medicine. <laughs> okay. And so I asked him, and this is the truth, I asked him, well, why did you go into medicine in the first place? And he said, because it's what my dad wanted me to go into. And that was a sad story. Now, he eventually found something that he liked, but man, there were a lot of years there that got lost along the way, going through med school and internships and all those other kind of intern and all the other kind of thing. But not every person is right for every career. And you know, I think I, this is a picture of my old office at the last school I was at. I was the dean of the business school there at Lynn University over in Boca Raton. And I would have a lot of conversations, usually junior year towards senior year with usually three people would be on that, a mom, a dad, and a student. And the student would not be doing well. And partway through the conversation, invariably, I would end up asking the parent, okay, who wants to major in marketing here? Mom and dad, do you guys want to major in marketing? Or do you want your son or daughter to major in marketing? Because the, it wasn't the right fit. It wasn't where the passion, it wasn't where the interest even was on the student. So think about that as you're helping and you're talking to your students. The other thing about finding your passion is take a test drive. We buy a car, what do we do? We, do it, we take a test drive, right? We buy a house. We go through open houses, right? We should do the same thing when we're thinking about what we want to do with our lives. And the ways that you can do that, you can do it while you're in college. You can do some of it while you're in high school as well. Let's take a test, take a class or two. See if it's something that you like. If you're thinking about psychology, take a psychology class. When you get into college, take that class early if you can. Try and take that psychology class as a freshman. See if you really like it. I was very fortunate where I went to school, they allowed me to take some of those classes as a freshman, so I found out that biology and I were not a match made in heaven. So it gave me the opportunity to do something else that I want to do. Talk to people who do that for a living. People who are doing something that they really like, love to talk to young people, and tell them about what they do. Follow them around, shadow them for half a day. See if this is something where you can see yourself doing that. Volunteer. Internships, I love internships. If you can do it while you're in high school, great. In college, we like to see students do at least one internship. Some students are doing two and three internships. We love to see that. Organizations that are hiring love to do that as well. And finally, there's work also. I think work is great too. Go out there, get a job, work part-time, see if it's something that you like to do. Take that opportunity for a test drive. Sorry, I, you know, I came out of the Disney organization, so stories are part of my DNA now. Um, and so this was a young man when I was at Syracuse University, came to see me, friend of the family, calls up, wants to come and see me, sits down in my office and he said, Mr. Kruzek, I'm working in marine biology and I hate my job. I hate hearing that, but I it says, okay, Javi, why do you hate your job? He says, I sit at a desk, I get into a lab occasionally, I hate my job. And I said, okay, well, when you did an internship in marine biology, he said, no, no, I didn't take any, I didn't do an internship. I said, uh-oh. I said, did you shadow anybody in marine biology? No. I said, did you ever talk to anybody who was in marine biology? I said, no. I said, why'd you major in marine biology? He says, I thought it'd be kind of cool. And that broke my heart here in that story. So we, we talked to Javi and we got him on a good track and he's in graduate school now in a different area. And I think his life is in the where, where it needs to be. But Javi didn't take a test drive. He just jumped full into marine biology. Great, but it really didn't give him where he needed to be in, in terms of his career. So that's one of those things, again, in that, in that tip, think about trying to take it for a test drive. College really is, let's check our time here. College really is about new knowledge, new skills, new friends, new interests. That's what you're gonna see. At the end of the last session, some, one of the students came to me and said, is it okay to come into college undecided with a major if you're not sure? I said, absolutely. There's no reason why you can't do something like that. Be open to new interests and opportunities. And don't worry, students, you are not alone. And parents, if your kids right now don't know exactly what they want to do in college, it's okay. 
it's okay. They're not alone. One of the things, the other tip that I like to give parents has to do with fit. And it has to do making sure that the college that you're thinking about, whatever that college is, is the right fit for your son or daughter. Again, I got a bunch of kids, I got five kids, and I remember one time we were up with my, one of my daughters at Save Regina, which is over in Newport, uh, Rhode Island. Gorgeous school, just right on the water, just absolutely beautiful. I'm taking this tour with my daughter. It's about an hour and a half tour, and by the end, I'm ready to get out the checkbook and go, let's go. You know, I wanted to buy the shirt, the hat, and everything else. I was sold. I think I wanted to go to college there is what it was. We get in the car, and my daughter goes, that place sucked, I don't wanna go to school there. <laughs> I'm going, seriously, I love that place. And she said, yeah, you loved it, Dad, but I didn't. It wasn't the right fit for me. And what she meant was that she just couldn't see herself in the students that she was seeing. The interest of the students that she talked to were not her interest. She just didn't have that fit. That fit is so important. There's a great study out that came out in 2014 by the Gallup organization, and it has to do with what makes students. They, they interviewed 30,000 college graduates. What makes them happy? What makes them fulfilled in their work and in their life? And fit was really one of those pieces. It was a fit about where they went to college and what happened at the college as opposed to the brand name on the college, okay? What they talked about was, were you involved in, in a, did you have conversations and did you get to know a faculty member there or a staff member who got, really got to know you over a period of time? Did you get an opportunity to work on a project over more than one semester? Did you get a chance to do internships or work experience or research with a faculty member? That's what really made the difference to whether the, these 30,000 people that they interviewed, whether they were happy or not. It was really about the fit of that college. So as you're visiting at colleges, make sure they're looking at you, we're looking at you, but you're looking at them as well. Do I see myself as this is a place where I can be for the next four years? Parents, Kids will transfer on a dime these days. It's very different than when, when we collectively went to college. It's very, very different. But you want to make sure that that fit is right for your son or daughter when they're going to school. And for the students out there, make sure the fit is right for you as well. So I'm, gonna, I'm running out of time here, but let me tell you a story about three students, Ryan, Jamie, and Bobby. And they'll kind of illustrate the whole point about finding your passion, and it takes time. Ryan started, it was at Syracuse University. And um, I remember having conversations with Ryan very early on while he was there. And he was a major in history, had no idea what he wanted to do, wasn't sure what he was going to do with a history degree. But he, he, would, he remember him talking to me about parties that he would go to. And, and parents, yes, they will go to parties on occasion. Very rarely, most of the time they're in the library. Trust me on that. <laughs> right, Beth, that's the way it works, right? Well, Ryan went to parties and he found out that there wasn't really good furniture there. So he actually devised this thing here. He started manufacturing it. We helped him to sell this kind of thing. And that's really where his passion became. It had nothing to do with history, but that's really where his passion was. He launched a company while he was at Syracuse. He was selling these things, but he knew that wasn't gonna be where his career was. So we had conversations with him and asked him, you know, we were talking to him about, what do you like about the idea of this company? And he said, well, I like the idea that I solved the problem, but I like the communication side. I like the networking side. I like talking to people about it. That's really what Ryan liked. And so what Ryan's doing right now, he works for one of the largest executive search firms in the country. Again, he didn't know where he was going to go with that history degree, but it eventually took him, based on that path of finding his way, he found his way, he works for an executive search firm. Let me tell you about Jamie. Jamie came to college and she had a passion. It was playing ice hockey. Unfortunately, there isn't a real pathway for, for, for finances for somebody like this. So practicality comes into the discussion about finding your passion as well. Jamie actually stumbled. She dropped out of school and she went to work. While going to work, she found out that there were certain things that she really liked. She liked, and she didn't know it at the time, but it was, it was really project management. She really liked project management. She was working with a retail company, went to work then for another company. She eventually got back to school and she was a much better student than she was previous to that. And what she did, she eventually ended up going to work for a startup company that focused on athletics. So her passion originally really got her into where her career was, but it took her several steps to find that passion and find out really what she liked to do. Let me tell you a little bit about Bobby. Bobby was a young man who when you talked to Bobby for more than five minutes, he was gonna to talk to you about sailing. He loved to sail and his notion was that he was gonna make money sailing. Unfortunately, he found out that there really wasn't a path to making money about sailing. So we got him some internships with some large companies. Didn't like that either, just didn't enjoy that. So what Bobby ended up doing is he spent a lot of time talking to people. He talked, 
He shadowed, he talked, he shadowed, we worked with him. And Bobby today, not surprisingly, works for a sailboat company. He almost never sails anymore, but he's in charge of marketing and sales for a company. He's also doing their social media stuff. So in terms of this, there was a pathway. All of these students here found their pathway eventually. They didn't come in with a passion, or if they did come in with a passion, it wasn't something that was going to allow them eventually to make money at the end of the day. I taught in a class on emotionally intelligent leadership last fall in our class, and I brought in a lot of uh, guest speakers. None of the guest speakers that we brought in knew what they were going to do when they were a freshman in high school, or a freshman in college. They eventually ended up finding their pathway over a period of time, and their career path was something like this. It wasn't the linear path that a lot of us expect. It was like this. I'm guessing many of you in this room, the adults, have gone through that very same experience. So finding passion takes time. You have to get to know yourself. You have to know what you like to read about. Think about what you like to read about. What do you like to think about? What do you like to do? What do you find interesting? How do you like to spend your day? Again, do you like something where you know exactly what you're going to do today? Or do you like to go into a day thinking, I don't know what my day is going to be. And maybe that, again, gives you an, a clue as to what your career path might be. I want to give the students one last piece of advice here that will guarantee, absolutely guarantee your success. And it has to do with working hard and doing your best at anything that you do, no matter what it is, whether you're working on a part-time job, part-time job in the mall, <laughs> or whatever you're doing, work as hard as you can. It will get you noticed, and ultimately, it'll lead you to a path, path for excellence. So here's my four points. Learn about yourself, find about your strengths and weaknesses, take a test drive, do whatever you best, and think about fit as well. So here's my contact information. If you have any questions or anything afterwards, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you very much for being here today, and I hope this was helpful. Thank you.